again friends. Welcome new subscribers. I'm Brian from Apex Detail. You know, when helping mentoring some of the younger guys that want to get into the industry, and after we have a polisher picked out, when it comes to the compounds and polishes, they often ask or mention, why can't I just go out and purchase M105, 205 to get started? And you know what? That's absolutely perfectly fine. To me personally, I haven't used Megs since the first episode of Saved by the Bell when we were first getting to know A.C. Slater, Screech, and Mr. Belding. It just seems to me, and there's nothing against the company, like they haven't kept up with it. All these quality, you know, top quality compounds, um, state of the art have come out, and it just seems like they've blown them away and left them behind. But that's just me. I have a couple tips and tricks for you guys that want to use that, and that's you'll get great results. You'll get um, as much out of the compound um, as you're going to get out of it. So let's get right to it. The Meguiar's 105 Ultra Cut Compound, I've seen it out there for, uh, available for a variety number of prices. Anywhere from $24 to $32 uh, you can purchase it or get it online cheaper. It contains their SMAT technology and the Super Micro Abrasive uh, removes 1200 grit or finer sanding marks and blemishes while also being able to finish a lot further than other compounds. Today we're working on a GM clear coat from General Motors, which is on the moderate hardness side. So we know the class, moderate hardness, but each individual car is different. So we're going to pick a test spot on the hood here, as we usually do. And I'm going to show you some tips on how to get the most out of the M105. We're going to team it up with a Lake Country microfiber cutting pad. And what I do first is a couple quick sprays of the Angel Wax QED. Any quick detailer will do and let, you know, as long as it has some, you know, impressive lubrication, you'll be fine. Two or three pea-sized droplets onto your pad. Walk over. And sometimes before I even uh, start to lay down the compound, I will pre-treat it with the QED or the quick detailer. Or sometimes after I get going, I'll stop and add a couple squirts. And this will cut down on dusting because the M105 has horrible dusting in my opinion. And its cycle time is rather short. And with that short cycle time, it's easy to overwork the product. Well, what does that do? It leaves hazing behind, or it just seems like you can't wipe off the residue after you're done working the section. That's one out of three negatives that keeps me from using the product regularly. The second would be the dusting, which I'll show you in a couple seconds, even with using QED. It just cuts it back a bit. And also, sometimes, if working out in the sun, which thank goodness I don't have to do anymore, I'm grateful for that, but the residue can be quite hard to wipe off in that situation, in that environment. Everything else will be exactly the same, like we'd be using Sonax or Angel Wax or any of the other top quality compounds. You're moving an inch every one or two seconds, slow, deliberate arm movement. This is what's left behind the residue and the dusting. Even though we've used the QED, we're still going to have dusting. It's something you can't get away with with this, uh, with this compound. Some of you guys out there don't mind it. It drives me absolutely crazy. Uh, when it comes to wiping off the residue here, it depends. When I'm out of the sunlight, it comes off rather easy, especially while using a QED. Um, if the QED is absent and I'm out in the sun, it, it gets quite hard to wipe off the residue. However, that said, you're going to see this section here. It does a fine job. This is hard clear coat, one pass, and it's done exactly what I wanted it to do. Just left behind a little bit of hazing that we can clear up later with a polish, and uh, we can continue on. That hazing there can be cleared up a bit with the 205. I have products laying around that do a little bit better job than that, so I wouldn't reach for the 205, but it can absolutely be done. There is no wrong answer here. As long as you're getting results, stick with it. I'm behind you 100%. So I'm going to get uh, back to work. I'm going to finish this hood. And as you see me using the QED now and again, just to keep things um, moist, dustless, and keep the cycle time open just a little bit further to get more out of the cut and the finish. I myself tend to go overboard with the residue control. I have the air chuck and a dedicated uh, pad cleaner right next to me. Poor boys. 
But I went out to the door here just so I can get it on uh, video, how I clean my pads. I'll spray it on, either brush it first or just use an air chuck and blow it clean. That way I can get around the car with a brand new pad without having to swap it out. Um, sometimes if it's a larger car like this, I'll swap out a few pads. But uh, on a small compact car, maybe to a mid-sized car, I can get away with one pad. By the way, when it comes to a pad cleaner, you don't need a dedicated pad cleaner. You could make your own. You can have just regular distilled water. You could use a quick detailer. You could use a rinseless wash. Uh, you could use soapy water, anything. It doesn't have to be a dedicated pad cleaner. It could even be a diluted cleaner to greaser. Cut purple power four to one, you'd be fine. Okay, here are a few clusters of scratches that I was talking about, but before we hit them, we're going to protect everything we can, especially the, the plastic rubber trim and the vinyl pinstripe. I have a dedicated uh, roll of tape for the pinstripe. It happens to be kamikaze. It's pliable. You can bend it, shape it however you want to. It can be a little pricey, sometimes over $5 a roll, but it's well worth it and a lot cheaper than if you burn through the striping on a car or damage plastic trim. All right, so again, we're gonna pre-treat the panel with my QED. Sometimes I will pre-treat both the pad and the panel. Sometimes I'll do that, plus add a little bit of the QED as I'm working the product to extend the cycle time. Not exclusive to the DA. If you want to use it with the rotary and a wool or a foam pad, go ahead. That'll give you better cut initially right out of the gate. However, the DA will finish a lot further down, especially if you're not experienced with the rotary. And you'll notice, again, in between adding more product to the pad after I clean it out, and sometimes while I'm cutting, I'm going to add the QED to keep that cycle time open, to keep dusting down, and to make it easier to wipe off that residue. You'll see me apply a little bit of pressure there right out of the gate. I want to get the best cut or the most cut out of the first few seconds or the first pass before it starts to clear up a little bit and then goes to its finishing process. After that first pass or two, I'll just slowly lighten up on the grip, lighten up on the pressure, and let it finish down. The compound wasn't overworked, so it's easy to remove. There wasn't that much of a haze left behind. It did a half-decent job. We have the deeper scratches left behind, which I'll show you with the best angle that I can get. There also is a little bit of swirling left behind. We are going to need a second pass where a lot of our top-quality compounds... Uh, on the podium, in, in our series anyways, would have been able to take care of a lot of that in the first pass. So that's another difference right there. And using my unforgiving LED here, I'm going to try to show you a few of those. Right here is a cluster, and there's two more clusters of swirls left behind. More like love marks from washing the car. Those are in a straight line. And here's more. However, I do want to give you the overall picture. It's done a lot of work. It's done a decent job. You can see the condition of this door we have yet to go over and the one we just finished. Now, one more quick area that I want to scrutinize. Back here, we have a lot of love marks that are straight across and are rather deep. Um, not positive that this went through a car wash. It's pretty big. I don't think they took this through the car wash. However, the pattern is similar to a pattern that a car wash makes. The wraps that go around the front and the rear of the vehicle. So we're going to remove that with a long throw polisher because thankfully this back gate here is flat. It's large. We could use the Lake Country attached to the long throw. The QED sprayed on there and the panel and the M105 and we'll get it done. To recap, 
put some good pressure right here on this initial pass after the first pass lighten up slowly and let the product finish as, as those super abrasives those super micro abrasives break down this here happens to be after two passes two quick passes I added some QED to extend the cycle time so I just had the polisher with one hand a little bit of pressure and we'll let it finish Once again, the residue is wiping off rather nicely, effortlessly. And forgive my microfiber getting in the way, but I want to get an angle so you could see the um, half of the gate back here that's been corrected and the other half we didn't touch yet. Huge difference. So I pulled it out into a bright sunny day for the money shot here. This hard GM clear was corrected with the M105-205. The only thing I added to get the most out of the system is a QED, my Lake Country microfiber, uh, the process of polishing or compounding. I finished up with the Angel Wax Perfect Polish, which is a cleaner and a jeweler, and added a little bit of protection. So yes, it can be done and uh, I will help any of you that have any questions whatsoever. All right, guys, so yes, you can get good results with a little bit more effort with the 105-205. Put some of those tips and tricks to use, and you'll be fine. I would really love to know what you guys think about uh, the subject. To me, it just seems like the chemist came in, handed in the formula for 105, 205, and we're like, eh, vacation time, we'll check back in 2025, see if we have to update something then. But that's just me. Again, if you have any questions or comments at all, please don't hesitate. Uh, I love all the comments. If you like it, give it a thumbs up. If you don't, give it a thumbs down. It all helps. Uh, thumbs up, thumbs down. It's all interaction with the channel. Uh, it all helps. I don't get butt hurt with that stuff, so I'm perfectly fine. Brian from Apex Detail, love you guys, catch you in the next video.